Где веревка? These soldiers here just discovered 13 Russian corpses that have been left here that were killed in what looks like shelling. The stench out here is really strong. I mean, you can see there's burn marks all over them. Some of them have really shrapnel wounds all through them. This is a really brutal, morbid place now, and it's their job to just clean these up. Just 30 miles from the Russian border, on the outskirts of Kharkiv, the Ukrainian counteroffensive is working, and Russian losses are on full display. According to some estimates, Russia has lost up to a quarter of its fighting force in Ukraine. The thing you see is that this is a strange proof of the position of the Russian Federation to its citizens. 100 rubles! The Bank of Russia! We are helping to return to the parents of the Russian occupants who came to the land. We are showing the act of humanity and humanity in relation to the war. Видається весьма вельми обґрунтовано, що таких знахідок нас чекає все більше і більше. Навіть ідентифіковані трупи місяцями затримуються в Україні, тому що в Росії, наскільки нам відомо, є взагалі заборона піднімати цю тему. Does it feel like you're pushing the Russians out of here now? Does it feel like you're winning this? Безперечно. І це яскраве тому свідчення. This war looked very different five months ago. Russia rained cruise missiles around the country in a multi-pronged nationwide assault, encircling the capital and taking control of cities and villages. Vladimir Putin expected Ukraine to fall within days. But then Ukraine surprised everyone. Civilians rallied behind a charismatic president, and Western money and weapons flooded the country. The defense lines held, and Russian forces pulled back. It was clear that Moscow and the world had overestimated Russia's strength. In newly liberated areas, the reality of Russia's military capability is clear. They weren't ready. We are riding along with the Ukrainian military who's taking us to some of the recently liberated villages just outside of Kharkiv Central. These villages, two days ago, were still under Russian control, but they're still within artillery range, still within mortar range. Поросята. Русские поросята. Написано, топи ровно, скоро домой. Не доехал. Не помогла, верою. Just days ago, this was a Russian military encampment and artillery position used to bombard Kharkiv. Commander Panama, who goes by his call sign and hides his face, picks through what was left behind. Принято движение изделия в эксплуатации. О, смотри. Jesus. Май, два дня. The Russian soldiers here were ill-prepared and sent in with decades-old weapons. It was clear that at this stage of the fight, Putin had miscalculated. Oh, wow. This was made in 1989. It's amazing. Everything that we're seeing, all the Russian gear is old, Soviet-era stuff. What is the matter with you, these are Russian MREs. But while the Russian forces are down, they aren't out. This is incoming fire just up the way there. That shell just went right over us, hitting that village over there. The war is entering a new phase. After months of Ukrainian momentum, the Russian military is once again on the advance. 
focusing their efforts in the Donbass region, where Russian-backed separatists and Ukrainian forces have been fighting since 2014. The new strategy, consolidate Russian forces on a narrower front and slowly pound each village into submission. We're just a few miles from Izum, which is one of the hardest and the most dangerous front lines of the fight right now. The Russian forces are trying to encircle this area. They lose control here, then the Donbass could be circled and all of the soldiers around there could be in trouble. So this is a really key part of the fight and an important and dangerous place for these guys to be fighting. All right, let's go. Go, 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 Ready? Go, go. This position is just a few hundred meters from the Russian front lines. Go ahead, go ahead. Careful for the pipes. In this yeah. hidden bunker, two stories underground, yeah. these soldiers, surrounded on three sides, are one of the only units standing in the way of countless Russian tanks, artillery units, and soldiers. Is this pretty safe here? Oh, it has been thus far. <laughs> As you can see, it's a pretty sturdy building. Denis Polishchuk, a Canadian-Ukrainian volunteer, was one of the hundreds of foreign fighters here. He was born in Ukraine and raised in Vancouver, and has been fighting on and off with no pay since 2014. Why do you do this? I'm, I'm originally from Ukraine. I dropped out of university to go fight in 2015, and now this, this unit is, is close and dear to my heart. Is it dangerous here? Is it hard to work here? The enemy positions are very close by. It's kind of the luck of the draw every, every single time you, you go outside. What is it like for the soldiers living here under all the shelling and attacks in this basement? It does take a toll on you after a while. You can definitely see it in the eyes of the soldiers who spent more than a couple of weeks here. At the same time though, we're on our own land. We're doing what we came here to do. There's nobody here that really doesn't want to be here. We had two, uh, two of my buddies were injured uh, yesterday out there. They, uh, they crawled in here to find more for cover. How are they? One's in a coma, the one who lost his legs, the 18-year-old. And that was just here, just right outside? Yeah, just, just outside, yeah. This war is now a battle for position. Ukrainian forces are on the defensive, trying to slow the Russian advance. But they try to take a breather when they can. <laughs> But it's never long between Russian attacks. This position is now under direct fire. We just got an incoming shell that just hit right above us. The entire building shook. It seems like the Russians know where this place is and they're firing on it right now. For six straight hours, Russians fired hundreds of tank shells on the position. These guys are saying they're pinned down right now. We haven't been able to get out. The shelling has been really intensive all around here. You good? Finally, there was a lull in the shelling for us to make our escape. Go, go, go! is totally ripped up. The windows have been destroyed already because the shelling that was already here outside. We're speeding down this road now to try to get out of here quick. According to government officials in Kyiv, up to 200 Ukrainian soldiers are dying each day. This is a new, more organized Russian offensive. They are consolidated in the Donbass, but can continue to shell from inside their own country a tactic that maximizes chaos with minimal effort, spreading Ukrainian forces even thinner. As they continue to defend against this assault, they're also trying to make the area safe for people to return. In the northern suburbs of Kharkiv, the explosive ordnance removal team. It's their job to come into these houses and pick up the unexploded ordnance that are falling all around here. It's really active here, there's lots of fighting, it's just plus one. Live artillery fire is moving all around here. So even when these guys are trying to clear these areas out, there's still a fight going on. Mexican 
Maxime Tomko joined the explosive clearance team years before the war. With just six teams working to cover the city of nearly one and a half million people, the calls are constant. Just up here is an unexploded grad rocket. This one is quite dangerous because it could go off at any time. Только начинается работа. Мы мы специализировались на Второй мировой. Сейчас мы учимся, учимся на войне, учимся на войне, что есть. Местные у нас только работа только начинается. Я тебя просто так отправлял, чтобы тебя не повело по другой дороге, там где нельзя ездить. What is the biggest threat for you? Самое опасное это под обстрел попасть. И есть противотанковые мины, есть противотанковые мины, есть мины на датчике движений. Это опасно. Не ну. Are you nervous when you do this kind of work? Is it does it make you scared? Переживаешь всегда, всегда переживаешь. A few days later, one of the team members stepped on a hidden mine and lost part of his leg. It once seemed like Ukraine had stopped Russia, but they continue to occupy nearly a fifth of Ukraine and they're pushing for more. President Zelensky says he's unwilling to give up any occupied Ukrainian land. For now, the war is approaching a stalemate. As more Western weapons come in, longer-range Russian Grad and cruise missiles continue to fall. Both sides are settling in for a long fight. And no Ukrainians are safe. Nearly a quarter of the buildings in the city have been destroyed. Nadia Hrobenyuk stayed behind even as her neighbors fled the near constant shelling. What was it like when the strike hit your house? Я была в большой комнате, вот, и бегом на свое место, где мое кресло. И туда зажала вот так, оно ж страшно было. Звон, это, 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 ну и все. Иконка со мной. Это мне когда-то приятельница подарила, она ее осветила. Только она, наверное, меня и держит. Пережили. For Nadia and the countless civilians living through a capricious and violent war, this is their new normal. Do you worry about being killed here? Боюсь, конечно. Вот это самое страшное, что залетит. Будем надеяться, что все обойдется. Должно закончиться. Не может же это постоянно продолжаться. I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.